So I also want to show you how to do this on your calculator. On your calculator, whenever you're working with matrices, you always want to start from a clear screen. Your matrices are, for some reason, the software in your calculator is very picky when it comes to matrices. So make sure you always start from a clear screen. The first thing you want to do, if I ask you to do this using your calculator, make sure you show me these three things. First, you want your matrix. Well, what is your matrix? Just put this in augmented form. Double check, make sure everything is right. So this is part of the solution if I am asking you to do this on your calculator if it comes test time. So now that we have our matrix, you'll see on your calculator you have matrix right there. It's just above the inverse button, right? Matrix. So you're going to do second matrix. We're going to edit a matrix. I'm just going to use matrix A. This matrix is a three by four. So you have to enter three by four. You can just push three, enter, four, enter. Now you just enter all of those elements and you can do one, enter, one, enter, two, enter, 11, enter, like that. Double check and make sure you entered everything correctly. Kind of like sending a text before you proofread it. Sometimes it says something you don't want it to say, right? <laughs> All right, so quit the screen. Make sure it's still a clear screen. Go second matrix. Now we want to make our calculator do all those row operations. So that's the math function. What we want it in is called reduced row echelon form. That's R-R-E-F. So choose reduced row echelon form. And you have to tell it which matrix to do that to. So go back to matrix. Choose the one you're talking about. So now you've told your calculator to put matrix A in reduced row echelon form. And we get this. That's your answer matrix. So the next thing that I would want to see is 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, 3. Notice that's what my calculator says, right? Now the calculator doesn't have this augment in there. I need you to remember that it's supposed to be there. And then when it says to interpret your answer, it means what does this mean? Well, this means x is 2, y is 3, z is 3. So my solution is the point 2, 3, 3. So if on a test I ask you to solve using a calculator, I need to see on your paper these three things. Otherwise, you won't get credit for it. So what if on your calculator you see some of these show up as your answer matrix? What would these mean? If you saw this on your calculator, what would it mean? Well, this means x equals negative 6, y equals 8, z equals 3, right? So this actually means negative 6, 8, 3. Okay, so what does the next one mean? If you saw that on your calculator, what would it mean? Well, that means x is negative 6, y is 8, but what about this bottom row? That means 0 equals 3. Is that a true statement? No, and in that case, there is no solution. Okay, so what about the next one? What would it mean? x equals negative 6. This actually means y plus 2z equals 8. And this means 0 equals 0. Well, doesn't that mean infinitely many solutions? Yeah. 
it does mean infinitely many solutions, but we have to say what those solutions are. Well, we already know that x is negative 6. That's given to us. This next line tells us that y plus 2z is equal to 8. I could actually solve this for y very easily by subtracting a 2z from both sides. So y is equal to 8 minus 2z. Well, remember, we have an x, a y, and a z in our ordered triplet. Well, we know x is negative 6. y is 8 minus 2z. Since this has a z in it, this doesn't have any variable. It doesn't need to because we were told that it's negative 6. This has a z in it, which means in the z place, we just need to put a z. So this is our general form of the ordered triplet for the solution to that system. So what about this next one? What does it mean? You actually have two equations, but you have three variables. What does that mean? Well, the first line means x minus z equals negative 2. And the second line means y plus 2z equals 3, right? Notice how both of these have z's in them. Since they both have z's, let's solve for the other variables. Doesn't this one tell us if we move the z over, we get x is equal to z minus 2, right? And this next one, if we move the 2z over, this one is saying that y is equal to 3 minus 2z. Just move the 2z over. So we have x in terms of z, and we have y in terms of z. That's going to tell us that x is z minus 2, y is 3 minus 2z, both of these have z's, so we just need a z in the place of z. So we have infinitely many solutions. We actually have two planes. These two planes are intersecting in a line. Kind of like if I, let's see if I can do that. If we took this piece of paper. So we have a plane and we have this plane, right? These two planes are intersecting in that line right there. And that line is represented by these points. Okay, number five. What would it mean if you saw that on your calculator? Well, it would mean that it's not in reduced row echelon form. This is just in echelon form or reduced echelon form. Row echelon form. I'll get it right in a minute. That just means that there's not a 1 right there. We need that to be a 1. So we can finish it by saying row 2 divided by 2 will give me a new row 2. So let's do that. Row 1 stays the same. But everything in row 2 gets divided by 2. Now it is in the correct form. And we know that our solution is the point 9, negative 4. So if you use your calculator, you do need to be able to know how to interpret what you see on the screen.